This is Jorge Molina. On December 13, 2018, Molina was arrested as a murder suspect by Avondale police. His phone location data and footage of a white Honda he owned confirmed his presence on the crime scene at the time of the murder. Molina was held in jail for six days, during which time, the police sent a press release to dozens of media outlets with his mugshot and name. Molina's reputation was ruined. He lost his job, his college program, and his car was repossessed. He couldn't pass a background check for new employment because a quick Google search for his name would immediately show him as a prime murder suspect. But Molina was innocent. The location data of his phone were provided to the police by Google. At the time of the murder, Google's data indeed showed that a device logged into Molina's account was at the scene. It also showed the user of Molina's Google account had searched for shooting in Avondale the night of the murder. But Jorge Molina wasn't the only person using his Google account. The other person was his stepdad, Marcos Cruz Gaeta, a person with criminal history and a previous arrest for driving Molina's white Honda without a license. Investigation later revealed that Gaeta was logged into Molina's Google account the night of the murder. Molina was able to prove his innocence, and one year later, he sued the local police and the city for defamation, gross negligence, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. Nobody is listening to your telephone calls. Edward Snowden broke our laws. The story of Jorge Molina reaffirmed my position I held since the Snowden leaks, that I can't trust anyone with my data, that even if I'm innocent, my digital footprint can and will be used to destroy my life, my family, or my career. And that's why I decided that I'm never gonna willingly give up my data to anyone. I decided I was going to anonymize the most sensitive device I own, my phone. And I'm going to show you how I did it. The location data Avondale police obtained from Google were part of a so-called geofencing search warrant. It is a reverse location search tool that casts a digital dragnet over a specific area in a specific time frame. Instead of targeting an individual, a geofence warrant will collect the information from every single device a requested company holds data on. A single warrant can yield results on hundreds of devices at a time. Google isn't the only company that has issued these warrants. If Molina had an iPhone, this story would have been the same. Apple, Uber, Lyft, or social media companies have all been subject to the same geofence requests from law enforcement. The popularity of geofence warrants has spiked dramatically in recent years, increasing by more than 1500% in a single year just for Google. Apple and Google respond to government requests with handover about 80% of the time. At such a rate, it is inevitable that your data will be collected by the police even if there is no specific warrant filed or charges pressed against you. This practice alone makes the vast majority of phones on the market unacceptable to me. When I use a phone with a Google account or Apple ID, these companies are by default going to be collecting unique hardware identifiers, my location information, and app usage data without possibility to opt out. If I want to use a phone, I need to choose one that is going to allow me to use it completely anonymously and let me be in control of all of my data. So what are my options? iPhones are unusable without an Apple ID which cannot be created anonymously, and Apple will always associate it with some location data and hardware device identifiers that cannot be reset. Using an iPhone is thus an inherent threat, because I can't opt out of this data collection unless I disable Apple ID and all radio signals at all times, which would render the phone useless. I need to find a phone that allows me to use it without any account, and with services I know do not collect my data because they don't have the permission for it. Android, as a base operating system, does allow for such a setup, but no phone on the market offers this setup out of the box. Any Android phone you buy will be bundled with Google Play services and pre-installed vendor applications that have privileged permissions and collect troves of sensitive data. Because Android is fundamentally open source, it allows for forks to freely form and distribute their versions of Android without any invasive services. There are many such forks available for free, 
but I want to choose one that maintains Android security model and keeps the best practices for security updates. If you follow this channel for a while, you already know where this is going. It's Graphene OS. Graphene OS is a research project focused on mobile security that develops and maintains a hardened version of Android operating system. Graphene OS is a far-reaching number of substantial improvements that all together make up for the most secure mobile operating system for the end user. Graphene OS is only available on Pixel devices because they are the only phones that allow for users to install custom operating systems with a fully locked device state, which is essential to maintaining Android security model. So as much as I dislike Google for their data collection practices, I'm happily choosing one of their Pixel phones to completely erase Google out of my life. And this is how I do it. One of the ways of obtaining a Pixel phone anonymously is to buy it in a physical store with cash, use the store's Wi-Fi to install security updates without creating a Google account, and turning on an airplane mode once the updates are complete. Then, I can connect this Pixel to my other device and install Graphene OS on it. Flashing Graphene OS on my phone is going to take care of most of the privacy issues from the get-go. By default, Graphene OS doesn't have any Google apps or services and only collects my IP address for network checks and system updates. My phone's serial number, IMEI, and other hardware identifiers are going to be inaccessible to any and all apps I install on my system. There is no Google account required for me to use this phone or install apps and updates. Because I want to keep this device as anonymous as possible, I do not even insert a SIM card at all and use the phone as a Wi-Fi only device. Even if I insert an anonymous prepaid card, the phone's carrier is going to have access to my IMEI and there is no way around it on any phone. It's just how IMEIs work. Phone networks are also used for cell tower triangulation, which can pinpoint your location even if you disable location services. I treat cellular network as untrusted and there is nothing that can be done to secure it, so I don't use it. Graphene OS enables full MAC address randomization, which makes my phone fully anonymous on any network. To protect my IP address, I use Zorba to route my whole device traffic through Tor. Tor is an anonymous overlay network that does slow you down, but it gives the most reasonable protection against traffic analysis attacks. It will prevent networks from tracking what websites and app servers you are connecting to, but using Tor in specific locations can make me stick out from the crowd, so I enable Tor bridges to hide the fact I'm connecting to the Tor network from my internet service provider. I put timers in my Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections, and make sure they're only on when I absolutely need to use them. Keeping your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on at all times significantly exposes you to surveillance and hostile hotspots. I make sure that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi scanning is also off, so that it can be used in the background for location tracking. Graphene OS offers a unique network permission toggle that isn't available on iOS or Android by default. This network permission allows me to disable network access to apps I don't trust with my data but still want to use. It fully prevents apps from accessing the internet without any leaks whatsoever. This allows me to use a navigation map without compromising my location information. Let's say I install OSMant to download maps into my phone to use for navigation later. OSMant is a free and open source map and navigation alternative I use instead of Google or Apple Maps because it doesn't collect my location information according to their privacy policy. But I don't want to rely on their pinky promise only. So as long as I can revoke OSMN's network access, I can have that additional layer of security in case the company would one day decide they want to collect my GPS coordinates. That way, I can rest assured my GPS location never leaves my device. Graphene OS, as the only OS on the market, offers a sensor's permission toggle to prevent dApps from inferring information about the phone from device sensors. Sensor information is more sensitive than you might think, since it contains information from your gyroscope, compass, accelerometer, thermometer, and others. Gyroscopes can also be used for ultrasonic cross-device transmission, which sends bits of information to nearby audio beacons to track you. This tracking is completely permissionless on iPhones and Android phones, but not on Graphene OS, since I can disable gyroscopes entirely. How I download apps is just as important as the security properties of my phone itself. It matters where your apps are coming from, and what data you give them access to. The most anonymous way to install apps on your system is through FDroid or by downloading APK files from the web. If you're routing your device traffic through Tor, this method can give you strong anonymity, 
but it significantly increases your risk of installing malicious or broken apps and thus should not be recommended. The most secure way to install apps on your phone is through the platform's official app repository. This is gonna be Google Play Store on Android and App Store on iOS. However, it is impossible to download apps on an iPhone without a phone number, and both Google and Apple will collect your app list or even app usage if you use their stores to manage your apps. But GraphenOS and even stock Android allows you to mitigate this data collection to a large extent. The best way to prevent Google from linking your app usage to your identity is to create a new user profile on GraphenOS and use it to install fully sandbox Google Play Store. That way, Google will not have access to your device identifiers, even if you have to give them your phone number during account creation. You can keep this profile to isolate apps that need your identity, such as your banking or personal social media apps, from your main anonymous profile. Stock Android allows you to create up to 4 and GraphenOS up to 16 user profiles. I maintain multiple profiles depending on the use to compartmentalize my daily usage, which I want to keep anonymous from uses that necessitate my identity and uses that have an increased threat model. My main profile is always treated as anonymous and I create new profiles on case-by-case -case basis to address different threat models. When I go outside for a workout with my friends, who am I kidding? When I go outside for a workout by myself, I switch to a guest mode that only has access to default Android apps and none of my sensitive data. In case someone snatches my phone as I'm pulling my pathetic self up on a bar, they wouldn't have access to my other profiles as they would be encrypted at rest with my lock screen passcode. I don't use biometrics for my lock screen to avoid having fingerprints used against my consent. If there is a work app, your asshole, also referred to as your employer, wants you to install on your phone, you can tell them to go choke on something thick and hard. If that doesn't work, you can create a new user profile to install a work app on so that you don't have to give in your personal accounts to communicate with your boss. This is how I isolate invasive apps from my main anonymous profile. Social media apps can be trusted. They require extensive permissions for Monday features just so that they can snatch more of your private data. This isn't just what you post on social media, it's also your phone book, usage data from other apps, and cross-platform tracking for ads. Both stock Android and iOS allow you to disable basic ad identifiers, but this is not gonna be enough to stop advertisers from tracking you. The most private method of using social media apps is to contain them in a separate user profile which you can only do on Android and GraphenOS. Don't keep your phone book or private files in this profile, only keep your social media content on it and nothing else. Because GraphenOS allows me to use up to 16 different profiles, I can set up multiple ephemeral profiles that can only serve a single purpose and purge them once I no longer need them. I don't use social media apps, but I know plenty of Monday apps use social media tracking SDKs in their code and sell my data to advertisers. I treat every app I can't vet as untrusted and put it in a separate profile for the duration of my use. I don't want these apps to access my work or anonymous data. They can only stay confined in their own profile where they can't access anything. Properly anonymizing your phone can significantly increase your digital security and physical safety. This isn't the only or exhaustive way of doing this. Everyone should think of their setup according to their needs. Sharing our setups to an extent can help us all make improvements. Surveillance is becoming more and more powerful, and so should our defense against it.